Do you want to know how to build a positive relationship with a child? I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all about relationships, communication, parenting, all through the lens of self-government. And in this video, we're going to be talking about your relationship with your child. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 things that you can do to strengthen the relationship with your child. And some of them might be easier than you think. Number one, establish roles. What does that mean? Roles, not responsibilities. I'm talking roles. So what is the role of mother? What is the role of father? What is the role of 17 year old daughter? Does she know those things need to be established? If you maintain parental authority and keep the parents as teachers and the children as learners, as key parts of their roles, then you will maximize function in your relationships. When children start acting like parents or telling parents what to do, that creates dysfunction. And if parents start acting like children and maybe treating the children as if they're friends instead of being the child's parent, then that also leads to increased dysfunction, which actually in the end damages your bond and relationship. This isn't to say that you can't be friendly or have great friend relationships with your children, but good friendship is actually based on truly understanding who you are to each other, which is all the more reason to establish those roles. It doesn't have to be something that's done in a dictatorial fashion. Just make sure that everybody knows who each other is in the home and when you all have your identity settled on in the family then you will have better productivity and bonding number two deliberate scheduling so we have to take time for each other. We all are moving so fast. We have all the extracurricular activities and all the academic things. We've got to make sure that family truly does stay our top priority. When the children and the family maintain your top priority, then they will also become higher priorities to your children. This will benefit your relationship. You've got to take time to spend with each other. So have family activities, have regular dates that you go on each week have meetings together, eat meals together. A lot of those things that maybe you've heard over the years, or maybe that your parents actually did, they are good things and they do lead toward increased bonding and strengthening of relationships. Number three, have confident leadership. This means that you have to be the leader and be confident in what you're doing. I know that's easier said than done. There are so many ideas out there related to parenting and interacting with children. It's hard to know what to do. In fact, many parents who end up taking my teaching self-government course, what they end up saying is I was tossed around trying some of this and some of that. And I just didn't know what my style really was or what would be best for my family. And so find the things that work best for you and stick to it. Really, you've got to maintain that consistent leadership so that you can have confidence in your leadership. Now, one of the key things that brings confidence is actually calmness. So calmness means that you have absolute confidence in yourself to handle any situation. If you don't have that, you may need some skills to help you out. Your children will also develop more confidence in and more calmness as you have calmness and confidence too. Before I get to my next points, is there somebody that you know that might need this information? There are so many families who are struggling to try to make good relationships with their children right now. How about you share this with them? Your friends will be grateful when you share good things that you found with them. Number four, open communication. So everyone should feel like there's nothing you can't discuss in the family. We shouldn't be shutting people down or telling people they can't talk. Make sure everybody talks. Now in our family, we all have ways that we solve our problems together. So our problems don't take up the majority of our conversation. Those things are easily solved and we spend our time talking about politics and religion and social issues and movies and some of the things of the day that are more exciting. The more conversation that you can have, whether it's about something related to the family or not, the better. They need to learn from your ideas is. And you need to hear their ideas too, so that you can see where they're at. When you share that level of communication with each other, it actually bonds you closer together, which in the end is what you want for a good relationship. Number five, don't emotionally manipulate. This is super important. So many parents, as they're working with their children, they will start emotionally manipulating to get things that they want. They'll start bribing or 
trying to make the child f be afraid of them or they'll threaten or they'll tease or harass or nag. All of those things are manipulative. If you are manipulating your child, your child will not trust you. Just like when they lie to you or they don't follow your instructions because they're manipulating, you don't trust them. We want to make sure that the trust maintains constant on both sides. This helps a relationship develop the very best. Here's a piece of bonus content for you. Did you know relationships only run one way? That's right. Many people think it takes two people doing the same thing to have a good relationship, but that's not necessarily true. So the way I think about my husband might be, and and could be totally different than the way he thinks about me. I have a relationship to him, he has a relationship to me. In our family, we have four children. There's six people total in the family. That means there's 36 relationships, including the way I see myself or my relationship to myself. Kind of fun, huh? Number six, don't think about yourself so much. That is a total trap. It's really common in our society to over-focus on how we feel, what we want, what somebody did to us, and this is really damaging for a relationship. So in our families, we need to be focusing on the family unit. Not even just focusing on the other person, focus on the unit as a whole. How is the full bond going? How is the full relationship happening? Is it healthy or not? If it is not healthy, then you've got to stop, pull back from other things and focus in on the family. But remember that as you're focusing on in on the family, it's not about what you get out of it. And when they make mistakes, it's not about how you had to handle it or what happened to you. They are learning. If you want a good relationship with them, you've got to realize that all their mistakes are just learning mistakes, even if it seems like they did it on purpose. I know some oppositional defiant children do do things on purpose that really do hurt, but we can't take it personally because if we do, we lose our ability to connect with them. We go into a selfish state. It's not healthy. Number seven, give skills training. So in our family, we deliberately train the children ahead of time for what they're going to need for success and how we're gonna solve the problems in the family. So we teach four basic skills for success, which are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences and disagreeing appropriately. But we don't stop there. We also teach them a skill set. It's called the calmness skill and there's six steps to it. So how to be calm when somebody else isn't, how to help them get calm without losing your calmness at the same time. We also teach them the five teaching styles, which are five skills that we use as parents to help them so they know completely ahead of time all the skills that everyone in the family will use to solve problems. This decreases anxiety because it increases predictability and helps them take more ownership of themselves and stop fighting against you or blaming other people so much. It's really good. In fact, all of this that I'm talking about leads towards self-government, so good stuff. Speaking of calmness, number eight is having calm, consistent follow through. So when you're going to be consistent with your children, this is going to be great because it actually improves your relationship. I know that seems weird. People think, Ooh, shouldn't I just be nicey nicey to improve the relationship? Shouldn't I just give them whatever I, they want to improve the relationship? No, I want you to know that does not work. They take advantage. They manipulate, they get entitled. They think of you as more as more of an object. It doesn't really work out well. In fact, they need the security that comes with you living your role. So make sure that you're consistent but when you consistently correct them, make sure you're also consistently calm. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a special gift that should help you with that calmness. Number nine, be predictable. So you need to make sure that you do follow through the same every time. And if you mess up, if you go back into an old habit, you don't use one of the skills that you told them you would use, just be honest about it. Say, you know what guys, just there, I wasn't keeping a very calm voice. And I, and I have been practicing keeping a calm voice. I told you I would keep a calm voice when I do a correction. So let's just redo that, okay? So that is part of being consistent too. When you're predictable and when you're deliberate, you catch yourself and you redo it the right way. This shows them the true life example of self-government. Number 10, and this is probably the biggest whammy for most people. It's the hardest thing to do. I've already kind of touched on it, but number 10 is to really master calmness. If you want to have a good relationship with your child, they need to know that they can trust their interactions with you. 
They need to know that you're steady, that you're principled. This really helps. In fact, it sets the perfect example for them. If they see you as an example of calmness, they, then they also see you as an example of wisdom. This brings them to you. They're more open for discussion about themselves, their behaviors, their goals, and where they're headed. So making sure that you can maintain your calmness is key. I would like to help you with that. That's what I do. That's what I teach all over the world. But for you, because you've stayed to the end of this long list of things that you can do to strengthen your relationship, I'm going to give you a course for free. I have a mini course. It's called the Calm Parenting Toolkit. And if you click on the link that's directly below this video, the link says teachselfgov.com slash toolkit. If you click that link, it will take you to the Teaching Self-Government Calm Parenting Toolkit for free. So go to that link now and I will see you there.